My dear viewers, I'm still keeping you waiting for my take on AMD's Ryzen 5000 CPUs. If, however, things go according to plan for me, this is going to be the last video that bridges the gap. Today I'm taking a nice look at the new Monsters 420mm all-in-one liquid cooling solution by Arctic. In fact, Arctic has just released a new extension to their AIO lineup, namely the Monsters Liquid Freezer 2 420, a 420mm radiator version of their existing lineup. And now buckle yourselves up nice and tight, this liquid cooler currently can be had for 99 to 110 euros over here in Europe, roughly $140 in the US. For an AIO of this caliber, this is pretty impressive and certainly does apply some pressure on other manufacturers. Those that follow me or rather my channel for quite some time now will most likely remember me testing the Liquid Freezer 2 240 last year. It turns out you really like that cooler. So today it's not just me asking myself, but you sure do too, what kind of cooling performance difference can we expect between a 240 and 420 mm version? Are there any noteworthy performance gains and or specific other benefits when going 420 mm? Let's get into it. As we are used to from Arctic, the amount they include is kept at a minimum without too much paper documentation and like. But do not worry, we get everything we need for the installation for a bunch of different platforms. Noteworthy for sure is the fact that Arctic likes to deliver their CPU coolers pre-assembled right out of the box. So we no longer need to mount and screw those fans onto the radiator ourselves and no cable management needs to be done anymore. Arctic has already done the job for us in a very good and clean way. The fans all connect to each other, are basically daisy chained, so no extra cables hang off the radiator whatsoever. All is controlled via a single 4-pin PWM cable of the pump. Now that's for a rough summary to start with. Impossible not to see is the horror of many, since chipset fans have made their return on X570 motherboards, a small 40mm VRM fan to basically provide some extra cooling for the VRMs. The advantage that comes with air coolers is that besides the CPU surrounding board components such as the VRMs get a fresh breeze too. With liquid coolers and the use of pumps that's very much not the case anymore. In most cases it's not really a big deal, but if you happen to be someone that cares about your VRM temperatures, this is a nice bonus feature. It is stated the mini fan operates at 1000 to 3000 RPM. Luckily though I can confirm this small potential for horror does its job super quietly. Many X570 chipset fans sound like a jet taking off compared to this tiny cute thing on here. It does however not necessarily provide a lot of air circulation around the VRMs to remain perfectly honest with you. But then again it might be a great feature for motherboards that come with bad VRM cooling or none at all. Those of you that still despise this mini fan luckily do have the option to simply unplug it on the bottom of the pump unit. Now let's get to that awesome fat 38mm thick 420mm radiator, aluminum. Guys, this one is chunky and should definitely have some sort of positive effect on our temperatures. But do watch out if you own a somewhat limiting PC case. The 38mm of thickness could potentially cause clearance issues and so could the 420mm radiator in general. So before you pull the trigger and buy that cooler, make sure it actually fits in your case. Otherwise you'll experience pain and darkness. According to Arctic, they make use of EPDM tubing with a nice flexible length of 450mm as well as good looking sleeving. Underneath it, there's cables routed along the tubing for the fans, which once again are being controlled via a single cable. This is very convenient, makes many things a lot easier, but can under certain circumstances also come with disadvantages, especially if you wish to control your pump and fans individually. Metal fittings are nowhere to be found, neither on the radiator nor on the pump unit. Instead we are looking at some sort of plastic metal ripoff, which to me looks rather cheap. But hey, this AIO doesn't cost all too much money, so yeah. Let's talk pump. That one I find 
interesting, let's put it this way. From an aesthetic point of view, definitely not my cup of tea, but as we all know, tastes differ. What's more impressive on the other hand is the fact Arctic apparently is relying on their in-house developed pump. A lot of focus has been put onto noise levels and if you're asking me, they've succeeded 100% in that regard. Same applies to the P14 PWM 140mm fans, which even at their max of 1700 RPM operate fairly quietly, while still achieving a pretty respectable airflow. Those of you that have eyes for colors the RGB gods bless us with, I have to let you down. Any sort of RGB lighting is non-existent on here, nada. Well I guess red green bluers will have to look elsewhere then to satisfy their needs. I for one don't find this to be a deal breaker though. As is to expect with such a rather smaller copper base, we are only getting official support for mainstream CPUs more or less. So bigger CPUs such as AMD Threadripper as so often are not being supported, which as a proud owner of one makes me sad and want to crawl into a dark corner. But not really, I do understand the reasons behind it to not offer support here. When it comes to installing this onto the AM4 socket, not a single thing I could complain about. It's all done super easy, straightforward, no confusion or hassles. The overall impression regarding build quality appears to be good, although some of the exterior elements may tell you otherwise, those plastic fittings bothering me quite honestly. But well, enough rambling, by now I've spoken 1040 words. Now let's finally take a look what this Liquid Freezer 2 420 is capable of when dealing with the AMD Ryzen 7 3800X. Alright, so while I do have to admit, I've never dealt with any 420mm radiator in the past yet, I still somewhat knew what to expect before I went into testing, so I kinda knew what to expect in terms of temperatures. Indeed, the Liquid Freezer 2 420 manages to catapult itself into the very top of my charts, even though it's just a few degrees less than with a 360mm cooler. Nonetheless, if we start comparing against what has more or less become a standard by now, a 240mm AIO, there are quite a few degrees separating these versions. By how much those fewer degrees actually affect your experience kinda depends on the CPU you use and what you wanna do. What I see here is, with the Liquid Freezer 2 420, there's an open door for two paths we can go down. You either go for the best possible cooling performance, or you simply lower your RPM across the whole AIO, therefore sacrifice any performance gain over other cooling solutions, but instead you're left with a near completely silent cooler, even under heavy intense CPU workloads. So at the end of the day, the choice lies in the hands of us enthusiasts. To sum things up, I can say with the Liquid Freezer 2 420, Arctic have released a mighty fine product for us enthusiasts that also do pay attention to value and how much money we spend. Sure, a 420mm radiator will not fit everyone's needs and neither will each and every case be able to take one of these bad boys, but those that want and can, they don't have to shell out an excessive amount of money. At a current price tag of roughly 140 US dollars, I'd say it's a pretty good price to performance ratio in that category at least. Products of this type and value I can definitely recommend. And with that said, it's time to end this video, say goodbye and thanks to you for watching, and I hope you're all safe and well out there. Until next time.